have the technology of gods. But there is, I think there is this sense that technology, our technological capabilities are so outpacing our wisdom, our judgment, Mm. our Mm. kind of time to develop what we want society to be. And it does feel unbalanced to me in a bad way. I don't know what to do about that um, because the technology, like, it's here. Like, this is no longer, you know, I've been talking about this for years. Um, This was the year that I think the AI got smarter than us. Mm. Like, that's a big, there's a big moment. Yeah. Um, And life goes on, but something fundamental has changed. I don't know how sci-fi it's going to get. No one does. Do you still think there are going to be some really strange or scary moments? Uh, The fact that, like, so far the technology has not produced a really scary giant risk doesn't mean it never will. It also, like, we're talking about it's kind of weird to have, like, billions of people talking to the same brain, like... But I expect, like, I expect some really bad stuff to happen because of the technology, which also has happened with previous technologies. And, <laughs> and I think we'll, like, develop some guardrails around it as a, as a society. Um, I think most, I think the right thing to, f- I, I think most regulation uh, probably has a lot of downside. The one thing I would like is as the models get truly, like, extremely superhuman capable, um, I think those models and only those models are probably worth some sort of, like, very careful safety testing uh, as, as the frontier pushes back. And you can see a bunch of ways that could go very seriously wrong. But I hope we'll only focus the regulatory burden on that stuff and not all of the wonderful stuff that less capable models can do. I think there's like three main categories of ways it can go super wrong that we could talk about. Number one, there's no alignment failure at all. AI systems do exactly what we tell them to do. Um, But a human running a powerful country, fighting other powerful countries, decides to horribly misuse it and create a bioweapon or hack into someone's nuclear weapon systems or who knows what. Um, That's not really like, this is why we think kind of like why distribution of this is important because these capabilities are coming. And if one bad guy has them and a lot of good guys don't, category one. Um, Category two is sort of the more classic sci-fi, you know, the the sort of like AI, let's not even call it conscious, uh, but the AI like develops some sense of agency and does not want to be stopped. And, you know, even, even if it's just like trying to accomplish a goal and there's no intentionality or consciousness, but it's like, I need to not be stopped by these humans in pursuit of this goal. That's, that would be an alignment, a big alignment failure and category two, um, sort of the, the sci-fi thing. And then, and the world spends a lot of time talking about those two. I think they're obviously important things we need to address. There's a third category that gets talked about relatively little compared to how important I think it could be. And this is one where neither of the obvious two failure cases happen, but the model in some abstract sense sort of accidentally takes over the world. And you can imagine a way this happens by thinking about what's happening with ChatGPT. So hundreds of millions of people talk to ChatGPT, soon billions, and people are relying on it for more and more important decisions in their lives and their work and whatever. And as these models get smarter, um, maybe right now you ask ChatGPT for advice about your job and sometimes it gives you good ideas and sometimes it doesn't. You certainly probably wouldn't let it do your job. Let's say it gets smarter and smarter and it gives you advice that you still understand, but now you think you should follow almost all the time. And then it gets smarter again. And now it gives you advice you don't understand. You're like, why is that the right thing to do? But it turns out to be right again and again because it can like see around corners you can't. And now you either follow the advice that you don't understand or you are less competitive than your peers. And so the model has no ill will. It's really just trying to help you. You're trying to do good work. But like, you're like, mm, if I want to be competitive, if I want to succeed in the world, if I want to live my best life, I kind of have to follow the advice of the model. And so does everybody else. So do the billions of other people talking to the model. So now we're all just doing what an AI system tells us to do. Uh, or, you know, the ones of us that want to be most competitive are. And we are creating new training data that's going back into the model. It's continuing to learn about society. All of society, all the economy and the model keep going in this sort of improvement loop and who's really in control of that it's like a kind of collective thing but it does mean we're like now doing what the model wants us to do 